A little bit of noise, a lot of fun, great food, good prices. You gotta be an ex-salesman to like people, and I like people. You gotta have good food, you gotta have good service, and you gotta have good action. We got the regular traditional menu, the veal dishes, the chicken dishes, the pasta dishes. Our sauces are all the best tomatoes. We can buy tomatoes and tomato sauces cheaper, but we'll give you nothing but the best. Our menu is the same menu for the last 10, 15 years. We experiment on the blackboard, and if something really looks good, then we put it on the menu. We got people that come here for our spaghetti and meatballs. They come here for the short ribs. Those are the regulars. They know the menu better than I do. Everybody is proud to work here. When I leave here, the place is still full. <laughs> and then that's when I leave it to my boys. All right, you young Turks, you take care of the place now. So, Guy, you say that Topo Gigio is the tops. Tell us why you chose it. Well, before we moved here three and a half years ago, we visited and did a lot of research and found this place, good reviews, went there, had a great time. Only during our last visit on the way out did we notice the antipasto. So on this visit we made sure that we uh, ordered that and it was a great treat, but uh, it just never disappointed. It has all of the standards that you would expect at a fine Italian restaurant, but it also has a lot of atmosphere mm -hmm. and excitement uh, without being, uh, having the noise being overpowering. Is this the type of place where you walk in there and it's like, hey, guy, where have you been? How's it going? No, they don't know me from Adam. <laughs> well, they do now. But they, treat, <laughs> but they treat you as if you are a regular. And uh, not every place does that. I think that's a gift uh, to do that without coming across as phony. Well, I grew up watching Topo Gigio on Spanish television. <laughs> so for me, the kitsch factor and the nostalgia was really intense. So in the words of Topo Gigio, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> and who is Topo Gigio? Topo Gigio was an Italian puppet that used to be very popular in children's television in Italy and was imported first initially to Mexican television and then to what we all know as Ed, Ed, Ed Sullivan recurring character. And I don't know exactly <laughs> what it has to do with Italian food except that the mouse comes from Italy. Um, but I thought Topo Gigio was a fantastic restaurant Every dish on their menu was wonderful, the, especially for a lot of Italian restaurants. They don't serve warm bread. Can we say amen to warm bread at the <laughs> restaurant? Because you want to dip up these sauces and these wonderful dressings and you know, with the warm bread. I think you can judge a restaurant based on the bread plate in large measure. If they have a lousy bread plate and a bad dessert menu, oh, to yeah. me, you can write it off. And if I can start with dessert, the tiramisu was phenomenal. It was creamy, it was decadent. The presentation was, is great. It was. <laughs> I was supposed to share it with my guest. Mine. <laughs> I, I, could, I could help it. It was so, so rich and wonderful, and even though everything I had was good, I really emphasized the dessert. Rachel. I know, it was very no. selfish. I thought I thought <laughs> very I thought the tiramisu was terrible. Are you I, kidding all me? The, every, I loved Why? all their food because I thought that the the the, the, the cheese so. sauce was runny and, and puddly. It was and a pudding. <laughs> it was like a pudding dessert. But the pudding has to be thick and I just felt like it hadn't been cooked or prepared right enough. And a tiramisu needs to be a little bit stiffer. I thought all the other dishes and all the salads were fabulous. I thought the desserts left a little bit to what the What did you order for your entree? I had the pumpkin ravioli. It was special. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. I could, it was very rich, very heavy, but you could not stop eating it. And uh, my partner Mark and I, we were like fighting over the pumpkin ravioli because it was really the, the dish that outshined mm -hmm. everything. I also had the eggplant parmigiana, which was good, but it wasn't the kind of thing that you want to write home to mother about. I don't know how to pronounce it correctly, but they have a dish with shells that has Italian sausage in a tomato cream sauce with peas 
that is just out of this world. And I don't allow myself to get it because it won't be going home in a, in a carry-along. I'm going to eat it all. And uh, frankly, I've eaten Joe's salad as an entree before. I asked the waiter, you know, what's in the Joe's salad? I felt bad for him because after like the 10th ingredient, he kept going and going and going. I'm like, it's like they just threw the entire like a pantry into it. You know, I mean, that salad has everything. Do you guys have the scampi at all with shrimp and scallops? That was fantastic. It was an appetizer and I loved it. But then we also ordered pasta and the filet medallions. And those were great, which I wasn't sure what to expect, but I was really impressed. So, Guy, uh, it seems to be this restaurant's always packed. Why is that? What I think is that it it gives a it has a, a good vibe about it. Uh, it's almost like a family atmosphere. I don't want to diminish the restaurant's merits because I do think it's very good, but I think it comes down to location in large part. It is the heart of Old Town. There is so much foot traffic. People like dining in Old Town because it's cute and you can walk around and it's charming. And if this restaurant existed in another part of town, I don't think it would be such a Chicago staple. Well, Rachel, uh, do you think you would have a different experience going in there if, like, say, the owners knew you and everybody knew you versus if you went there for the first time? You know what? I felt like they knew me, and that's what I give them credit for is they certainly don't, but you walk in, and Tom was behind the host stand, and he was friendly, and he was welcoming, and he jokes around, and the waiters were very engaging, very helpful. They certainly treat you as though you are one of their own, and I give them a lot of credit for that. This could easily be a chain restaurant, but it's not. It's, it's very comforting. It's hard to find a good Italian restaurant in Chicago. You where, think so? Oh, for me, yeah. It's, it's that combination of good salad, good entree, good, good bread, that, and the great wines that really wins it for me. And I okay. love seeing Topo Gigio. I had a Topo Gigio doll when I was a kid. I used to believe Topo Gigio was alive. <laughs> the truth comes out. All right, Guy, you picked Topo Gigio. Give us a summary. A uh, great variety of the Italian standards, a uh, attentive wait staff, and a lively atmosphere. Okay, Rachel? I think it is quality Italian dining, and it's certainly an enjoyable place to have a meal. But keep in mind, there are lots of great Italian restaurants in the city, and you can explore many of them. All right. And Fausto? A restaurant even Topo Gigio would love. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you can try the tiramisu and much more at Topo Gigio, 1516 North Wells, 312-266-9355. Open for lunch and dinner Monday through Saturday and for dinner only on Sunday. Reservations are accepted, and the average tap per person without drinks is $45.